So how are you supposed to fund education? I mean, what's it really cost and what should we do? The basic building block for school funding is something called the foundation level. And this may be the single most misunderstood aspect of school funding, I think, that's out there. A lot of folks think the foundation level is everything that gets spent per kid. It's not. It's not even close. In fact, it excludes a lot of the things that make up the cost of public education today, like special ed or transportation costs or lunch costs. All the foundation level is supposed to be is the actual cost of the core curriculum, the solid basic core academic curriculum tied to a quality education. In fact, Academic alone, no enrichment, no music, no sports, no theater, just the cost of the academic program. And as the name would imply, the foundation level, on this solid foundation, you are supposed to layer those other aspects of school funding to come to your total expenditures per pupil. Now, our current foundation level in Illinois is $5,334 per kid, and it's based on nothing. It's kind of a made-up number. Now, Governor Ryan, a few years ago, decided that, you know, imaginary number is probably not the most sound basis for beginning education funding. So he appointed something called the Education Funding Advisory Board, EFAB. And EFAB's sole task was to take this foundation level and tie it to something you could measure, something objective, a standard. And the standard they selected, and you have to stay with me on this, is what would it cost an efficiently operated school district per kid to see two-thirds of their non-at-risk children actually pass the state standardized tests? Let's break that standard down for a bit. Number one, it's two-thirds of the kids, right? It's not all the kids. So it throws one-third out the window, and there's that federal law, what's it called, no child's behind is left, or... It's a, NCLB, of course, NCLB expects us to get to 100% by 2014. So to be very clear, the EFAB standard is not enough to satisfy NCLB. Number two, it's not even two-thirds of all kids. It's two-thirds of non-at-risk kids. I don't have to tell the people of the IEA that it is far more expensive to educate at-risk children. All the data show that. Children with special needs come from concentrated poverty, etc. So now we're talking about the cost of the academic programming needed to reach kids with a reasonable likelihood of academic success. And then it's based on efficiently operated school districts. That means school districts that are spending at or below their local costs and are still receiving generating these good results. So it throws out all the highest spending school districts in the state and really focuses on efficiently operated districts. Based on all that tight, narrow, measurable, accountable standard, EFAB recommended that today the foundation level ought to be $6,675 per kid or $1,300 more than it is. Well, the cost of funding that increase is $2 billion a year in new money right now to education. A couple of things. Number one, we're not getting the results we want statewide out of education and now we understand why. We've never, ever given teachers and educators the capacity to deliver the results we demand. We just haven't given them adequate capacity. Number two, it's a big price tag. It's two billion in new money every year. That's a lot of scratch. Of course, it's not just regular K through 12 education that maybe needs an enhancement in investment. The special ed reimbursement rate was first set back in 1985 at $8,000, and it's never been changed since 1985, not even for inflation. Now, the costs, of course, of hiring and maintaining a special ed staff and teachers and assistants has certainly gone up, but the state has not even put one plug nickel more into this reimbursement rate. In fact, in many years, it doesn't even fully fund that. You get prorated. That means you only get a portion of the $8,000 per teacher. So if we just adjusted for inflation, that $8,000 figure today would be $15,323 per teacher. That's a huge differential. 
If we adjust it for the right measure of inflation, see there's regular inflation, CPI, that's the cost of everything in our economy. Clorox, bleach, toilet paper, tooth, all, everything. That's really not an accurate measure of the cost of education. The accurate measure of the cost of education is the employment cost index, that is the cost of labor. And there's even an employment cost index tied just to the cost of labor and labor benefits in elementary and secondary education. Using that, that $8,000 from 1985 ought to be $18,000 plus today, almost 19. So we've created a huge hole for school budgets by underfunding the special ed mandate. And oh, can school districts not provide special ed services? No, that would be illegal. So this is a definite huge unfunded mandate that's up around over $500 million a year. The state's spending priorities are really good. In fact, from a waste, fraud, and abuse standpoint, you know, we tried to find the line item for waste, fraud, and abuse, thinking that would just help us out, figure out where all the dollars are wasted. And sadly, the budget isn't quite that transparent. But we were able to pull out administrative costs across all lines. So we did that. 4.4%. That's it. Now, before I took this job working at a tax policy economic group, I was a partner at a law firm representing Fortune 5 companies and banks. I was a business lawyer, mergers and acquisitions. I was head of structured finance, intellectual property. I don't know of a business anywhere in the private sector that has a 4.4% administrative management cost. Highly efficiently operated businesses in the private sector come in at about 13%. I'm not here to say there's no waste in state government. Of course there is. When human beings get together to spend 20 billion plus dollars, they're going to waste some of it. We shouldn't tolerate it. But that said, it's not material. And even if we were able to magically elevate government above endeavors run by humans and eliminate all waste, we still wouldn't come anywhere near generating the revenue we need to find that $2 billion for the schools, to find that extra $500 million for special ed, to find the money we need for higher ed, basically to find the money we need to invest in making Illinois a competitive place. We are an efficiently operated state. We have really good priorities. In fact, we even have a low head count. Do you know that we rank dead last in the nation, 50th in number of public employees per capita at the state level? That includes teachers, including teachers.